G'day folks, it's Cortezarino. We are going to get so much building done today, but first we need to talk about my diet. I'm referring of course to golden carrots. You know, I've got a pretty awesome world here. We've got a huge city, a castle and a mountain village. Uh, but still the entire time, my infrastructure has been lacking a little bit. This is where I get all my food. From these cows right here, right at spawn. I've had these here since the beginning. And it's just out of range of my base. So any time I run out of steak, which is all the time, I've got to come back here and sort of AFK and feed them. And it takes forever. So I've finally made the switch to the golden carrots, even though steak's my favourite. Golden carrots are pretty good. So we don't need these guys anymore. And of course, I didn't kill them, guys. I let them all go free. So let's clean up this mess. And I've only been keeping these guys around just in case I needed some eggs. So I'll let them go free as well. Gee, those chickens fly away so fast. And we don't need the... Oh, no. Um, we're making a bit of a mess here. So with golden carrots, I don't need the steak anymore, and I don't need the cows for leather because of our piglin bartering system here. So I've got more leather than I'm ever, ever going to need, so we are happy. And I've got the, uh, the new gold farm upstairs that powers this thing, and that is giving me tons and tons of gold, so... It just made sense to go for carrots rather than always having only about a spare stack of steak. And it's so easy to get the golden carrots, guys. I can grow all my carrots instantly here in the little nano farm. And then with all the gold I've gotten, and this is only a tiny little portion, but I've got gold for days. Uh, I just went and uh, made a few there. So I've never had this much food in the world. It is awesome. But uh, I kind of do want to keep a cow around just in case. I don't know if I, why I'd want one. Maybe for, for steaks for the doggies. Yeah, steaks for the doggies. So we are going to go over to the Japanese area and actually use my new base over there. And usually I tend to have a whole lot done between episodes, guys. But uh, it's not the case this time. I still haven't done anything more on my little courtyard base here and the back of it is still a disaster it's uh it's not very, looking very realistic but uh yeah we will eventually get onto this i've just been so busy like uh usually i spend a f at least a few hours a day on minecraft but uh, at the moment i'm only spending well i'm only getting onto minecraft every second day just very busy IRL, so we'll, uh, we'll, we're definitely going to build a lot today, but it won't be as much as I'd like, like finishing this thing off. But I figured we've got these little farms up the back here. I think I just want to move some cows into here. And then there's another one over there. We'll see what we can get. I know there's some llamas up there. Maybe we'll, uh, maybe we'll trap some of those. But luckily, I've got all that wheat from destroying that chest before. Let's go find ourselves something. Oh, you tell me stories You tuck me in And the second you leave I call you right back To check for monsters in my streets Yeah, high school was hard You'd fight with my mom I'd fall asleep to the screaming Sound machine always speaking Left emotional scars now I'm 21 A soul of 50 years And now that you are gone I'm doing things that I shouldn't know from I'm doing things that I shouldn't do I'm 21 A soul of 50 years And now that you are gone I'm doing things that I shouldn't know from I'm doing things that I shouldn't know Do. 
So what is going on? Cortez runs off to get some animals and ends up doing a time lapse. Uh, that's just because I said we were doing big things this episode and then I spend the uh, entire introduction talking about golden carrots. <laughs> it was probably, you're probably starting to think, what is he on about? So I just threw that in uh, just to say this is going to be a time lapse episode. We have a big one planned. But uh, check this out. While I was doing that, I went and caught some bunnies. So we've got three in there. Oh, gosh, I hope he doesn't drown in the cauldron. That could be bad. Because uh, we are be we're going to be getting the bundle in the next update, that little bag that you can put a whole bunch of things in. And a lot of people are saying, well, that's just an early game thing. Uh, that is going to be brilliant for me for when I'm doing time lapses. Look at this looking lovely this thing i've just chucked it up here at the top of the rice fields so it's looking super cool yes it's a korean design but that doesn't matter it still looks awesome just sitting up here on the hill but uh yeah what was i talking about i was talking about the bundles and time lapses see a lot of the time i like to load my inventory up with everything i need and then go and build something, and then suddenly I get some seeds in my inventory and uh, just end up dropping items all over the place. Items on the ground look terrible for time lapses. So having a little bundle in there just to uh, just to put all the extra little things would be awesome. And I always bring more materials that I need, just in case I drop some. So if I'm building a roof and I, I finish up with a certain material, I can put the leftovers in the bundle and, and just have more room in my inventory for the time lapses. Oh, and when I'm furnishing rooms, I could have a few bundles with all the little goodies I need for that room and just be able to carry so much more. It'll be awesome. But something funny happened, guys. I just did an Evermore episode where I found a zombie spawner and I built Pac-Man. And I was saying that was the first zombie spawner I found in about two years. Well, wouldn't you know it if we can <laughs> go in here. Now, I actually don't know if this is a zombie spawner because just before I did the time lapse, uh, I started lighting up this one cave that was down here and I actually ran out of torches just as I was approaching the spawner. I think it was a zombie spawner, but I'm not 100% sure. Let's turn these shaders off. So it was just, I think it was just up here. This is where I ran out of torches and yeah, lots of baddies down there. Is that a zombie? Yeah, that definitely looks like one, doesn't it? But we've got creepers everywhere. Go away! Last thing I want to do is blow it up. Um, okay, let's... Oh, gosh, what is it with the creepers? I don't have a shield on me. Yeah, it's definitely a zombie spawner. So, if I'd found this before I'd done the episode... The, uh, the Evermore one, I probably would have... It's a... Uh, I don't want a creeper following me in, so I might just do these passages on the sides first. We'll get a few more zombies spawn, but what are you going to do about that? Okay, I think that's enough. Let's, uh, whoops. Hello, guys. So I don't think we're going to be doing a, uh, a Pac-Man out of this one, just because I've, I've just done that, even though it would be cool. I think what I'd rather do is maybe just do a bit more caving around the base. And hopefully, because I've already got one mini game at the base, I would love to find a zombie spawner at least somewhat close to it and be able to put Pac-Man in there. So when you get the world download, you can play that. Gosh, how long does that go for? All right, let's go check that chest. But yeah, guys, first zombie spawner in this world. And that is completely useless. I'll just leave that there. So that is one I am definitely going to come back to. And maybe build Pac-Man if I can't find another one close. But uh, yeah, what other chances? I haven't found zombie spawners in years. And in a week or two, I found two of them. All right, guys, we have been messing around for quite long enough. I think it is time to get into the meat and bones of the episode. We've done one little time lapse, but we're about to do a big one. My Austrian city needs a few additions.
And before I forget guys, someone asked me for a tutorial for the wheat farm I designed on the Evermore server, the little bone meal nano farm. And it's probably a bit small for me to bother doing a tutorial for, but I told them I would show them how to do it on the next Dystopia episode. And I figured because I've got my cows here, we might as well build that right here. So down here's where I got it. We'll switch off the shaders and do a quick little tutorial. And I guess the reason they really want a tutorial for this is because it uses four dispensers. So you can actually do beetroot in this. And there are other designs that of course can do this. But uh, this one is super duper simple. So uh, just ignore all the bones. I'm going to load it up with bone meal. And you can probably ignore the torch as well. But that is what you need to build this thing. So let's just grab all of this. And we'll get started. So you need a 5x5 five five area. And we'll knock out the middle one. And we'll put our dirt in there. And then we're going to be looking at it from this way. So I will put our water source in there. Let's grab all this stuff. So we'll waterlog that bit of earth. So it's going to stay hydrated. And you can just hoe it with your hoe. And the next step is to put a dispenser on all four sides facing in. So I will need a, a temporary one. Boom, right there. And I'll place the other one above the water. So let's get back to this side. So looking at it from here, we're going to look at this dispenser on the left, jump up on top and just place an observer block like that. And then just behind it, we're going to have another observer facing in the opposite direction. And we will grab our fancy blocks and we're just going to put a block underneath it. So that observer is going to power those two dispensers. Now we can grab our piston and looking from the front again we're going to put the piston over that gap in between the dispensers now we'll grab blocks we're going to place one there one next to the piston and then one on top and we'll put a lever right there and switch it on now it is i think it's just a redstone from here so we'll go one two three on all of those blocks and then we're going to put two on top of both of those observers. And that is actually done. So what you do is you come in here, you load all these up with bone meal, you come in here and you just plant your seeds on there and they'll keep popping up and go straight into your inventory. And then what you can also do, we've got, oh, I brought two, two too many observers. We didn't need them. Uh, if you're worried about light levels, you can plonk a torch right there to stop anything from spawning. And for the dispensers, you can just put a hopper leading into the back of all four of these and just put a double chest above them. And that way you can load it up with heaps of extra bone meal. Put a chest right there. Let's make it even. I've done that so uneven. We'll put the, the chest popping out again from that direction. So if we come up above and look down... That is the size of it. Very nice and compact little design. And while we're talking about requests, a few people have been hounding me for the next world download for my world here. And I am going to be really annoying and not provide one just yet. I think they want it because they want to copy the church, which is awesome. Uh, but I'm so close to having... This, uh, this big section of the city done, and I want to put out a nice time lapse. I think I've probably only got about maybe three more buildings to go and a bunch of terraforming, and we will have a cool time lapse of the entire city getting built here. So I don't want to provide one just yet. I think I'm going to keep you waiting probably another four weeks or as long as it takes me to do this. Plus, I have to pay for all the, the storage for these world downloads and the Dystopia world downloads are starting to take up quite a bit of space. But uh, anyway, hopefully that is not too annoying for you. But let's have a look at what we've done here. We've added another building for our, for our town square here. And what I'd noticed is a lot of my buildings around the town square were completely different. So just for a bit of realism, I wanted to do one similar to uh, to what we've already got around here. Because a lot of the houses would be 
in a similar design. So I really like this one here. So the other, the new house I've built, well, they're not houses, they're shops, is very much in the same sort of spirit as that one. Very much the same shape. And this one has a bit of a story to it because I've designed it a little bit weird. So it would have been built as two separate shops joined together. But uh, what I've actually done is gone and completely joined them together. So we've got a doorway in here now. So it's all owned by the same family. So the idea for this is we've got two generations, or well, maybe even three generations of the one family probably owned one of these shops and then when the uh, the people next door were selling up they bought that and so the grandparents live in one side and then the uh, the kids live in the other and they just run the whole place here so because our big pub here doesn't have an eating area we've made a lovely little cafe on the side here and I've done more umbrellas, but these, once again, are slightly different to all the other umbrellas I've done. I'm getting quite good at these, and I really like them. They add a lovely little dash of colour to uh, to all our outdoor areas. And you can get up here and get inside the pub. Well, the pub people can come out here to the nice little bistro area. I think it is looking super duper lovely. Little rose garden, nice overgrown leaves up there. And, uh, and yeah, it's looking really good. So this would be sort of like a, a bistro cafe area. So you can come in here. There's a few seats on the inside. You can order and, uh, yeah, the waitress will bring all your food out to you. So super cool. Let's go upstairs and we might, yeah, we'd call this the, uh, the children's room. So they're not children anymore. The, the young kids grown up, got their own family. So we've got the double bed here and maybe their little baby sleeps over here and a little a little area up the top there just for storage but yeah nice little room in here and if we go into the other part this is where all the cooking for the cafe gets done so we've got the big big cooking area there but we've also because we've got the front door we've also got a little a little area here where they can serve people so this might be just for takeaway if they don't want to go next door and maybe the waitress is out of the table and they have to wait, they can just come in here. There's always someone in here and they can just get their, their goodies and run. And then, of course, if we come up the top here, this is where the, the grandparents would live. So just a double bed, a few little bits of furniture. We've got the chimney from downstairs poking up up there. And then they have a nice little balcony out here. I didn't show the balcony for the other side. I don't know if uh, if there's a whole lot there, actually. Let's have a look. Yep, it is uh, very small indeed. We've just got a few flowers and stuff, but they, they do have a lovely little view of the town square out here. So, yeah, I'm uh, pretty happy with this building. We need a few more shops, and once I'm done with all the shops in the city centre and we do a nice time-lapse, then I can just focus on residential areas after that and just build more houses. Oh yeah, and in case you're interested, this is where I'm hiding most of my light. So we've got a nice little pattern in the floor and we can just throw in the spruce trap doors every now and then and chuck some lights in. But yeah, I love the outdoor area for this place. So we are going to leave the video here, guys. But before I go... There is one thing I want to show you over at the base. I, uh, When I found that zombie spawner, I just, as soon as I found it, I'm like, oh, I should build Pac-Man. But, you know, I can't because I've uh, I've just built it in on the multiplayer series. But it got me thinking, if we drop down all the levels of the base, we've got the super cool bomb shelter down here. And then over here, I've already built one mini game, the test drive game. So if you've already got a world download and the last world download and haven't played this yet, definitely give it a go. It's super cool. But I thought, why not, guys? And uh, yeah, I'm working on another little game for you. So look forward to that. You know, it's almost time to get back to the bomb shelter down here. I've been starting quite a few projects and uh, yeah I just keep getting distracted by the city and we're not getting 
any of these done. Ooh, looking forward to that one. Alright guys, we will leave it here for today. Thanks for watching. I'm Cortez Arena. I will see you later.